In December of 2021, Mohammed Ben Suleim succeeded Jean Todd as the FIA president. And now, in early March of 2024, he finds himself at the centre of not one, but two massive controversies. Controversies that could bring an end to his tenure in the role. He has already attracted controversy for some of his antics at award shows. Japan, you said, was controversial. No. The FIA was blamed for the points, but it was not the FIA which made the rules. It was the teams who made the rules, and we were implementing it. But now these scandals could quite easily be the end of him. I will go over each of them individually to see what ramifications they have for his future. The first scandal in question relates to the 2023 Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And of course, just like Singapore 2008, the driver concerned is Fernando Alonso. The story goes as follows. At the start of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix in 2023, Fernando Alonso started from second on the grid, but placed his car partially outside of the starting box for the grid. This resulted in Fernando being given a five-second penalty, which he chose to take at his first pit stop. But the rule is, when you take a penalty during a pit stop, no one can work on the car in this time. And Fernando was subsequently given a further 10-second penalty after it was determined that mechanics had touched his car, namely the rear jack. However, Fernando's penalty was later rescinded, with the FIA pointing to a lack of previous clarity on the rule, namely in reference to Article 54 of the Sporting Regulations, which reads that while a car is stationary in the pit lane, as a result of incurring a penalty in accordance with Articles 54.3a and 54.3b, it may not be worked on until the car has been stationary for the duration of the penalty. The key word here being for the duration. The right of review decision given at the time said, We concluded that there was no clear agreement, as was the suggestion previously, that could be relied on to determine that parties had agreed that a jack touching the car would amount to actually working on the car. After the situation arose, further clarification was added to the regulation saying that in this context, touching the car or driver by hand or tools or equipment will all constitute working, meaning that had these words been in place at the time, Alonso's penalty would have stuck. But where does Mohammed Ben Suleim fall into this? Well, there was an allegation made by an unnamed whistleblower that Ben Suleim called the FIA's vice president for sport in the Middle East and North Africa region, who was in Saudi Arabia at the time, and told him that he thought Alonso's penalty should be revoked, sparking allegations of race fixing from the FIA themselves. This saga is likely to cause even more reputational damage to the FIA which had already been souring since the events of Abu Dhabi 2021, and risks bringing the sport even further into disrepute as a result of the actions of those who should be making and enforcing the rules, which would no doubt cause a lot of stakeholders to feel resentment towards the sport and potentially move away from it. An investigation by an ethics committee is expected to take four to six weeks, and we will subsequently be able to learn more about what really happened. The second controversy relates to last year's Las Vegas Grand Prix, the first of which to be held on the famous strip. It is alleged by the same whistleblower that Mohammed Ben Suleim told officials to look for ways to not certify the Las Vegas circuit for racing. Now, the reasoning for this is very unclear, since the Las Vegas Grand Prix was slated as Formula One's flagship event, with Liberty Media having invested at least half a billion pounds into the event in the hope of it promoting the sport in the US and all around the globe. Essentially what the whistleblower has been saying is that Ben Suleim was requesting that they find issues with the new circuit so that it would not be certified, and therefore declaring it unfit for use and prevent the circuit being used for Formula One. However, a good reason for this soon came to light in the first practice session, when Carlos Sainz ran over a drain cover, causing massive damage to his Ferrari. Causing a disastrous first day for Formula One in Las Vegas, 
as the rest of first practice had to be cancelled whilst all the drain covers were stuck down, and then the second practice was also delayed to the point that spectators were no longer allowed to be there, as a result of quote staffing issues, mainly relating to hours that security and transportation workers were legally able to remain on duty that evening. Had these issues not been rectified, we could have quite easily been looking at an Indianapolis 2005 style event, except it would have been even more embarrassing and even more costly for Formula One. Now, from a commercial aspect, it's certainly very interesting that Ben Sulayem would wish for the race not to go ahead after all the time, money and inconvenience for local residents that had gone into the event. Luckily, fixing these issues and continuing with the event ended up being the best decision, as the Las Vegas Grand Prix was seen as a massive influence in Formula 1's record-breaking profits in 2023, a 63% rise compared to 2022. So just think about it, if Ben Sulayem had his way and they were able to find something wrong with the track that would cancel the event, then these profits would have been absolutely decimated, and only seek to crush Ben Sulayem's credibility even more. With Ben Sulayem being slapped across the face with two separate massive scandals at the same time, it seems only a matter of time before Ben Sulayem is ousted as FIA president and his tenure will go down just as well as his Renault F1 team test went in 2009. My hope is that the investigation into these situations does not further dent the reputation of Formula 1 or completely tarnish the image of Ben Sulayem. Let me know what you think of this controversy in the comments down below. And in the meantime, thank you very much for watching and have a blessed day.